Hey peeves, I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me, and today we are doing a bit of a riff on a project I shared back in June, the Super Simple Moisturizing Lotion. So this is a super simple moisturizing lotion, but using glycerol stearate and PEG 100 stearate as the emulsifier. I've really been enjoying using this emulsifier in a wide variety of different formulations, and I've shared several of them over the last few weeks. Glycerol stearate and PEG 100 stearate is a really interesting emulsifier. I've described it before as being naked or invisible. It emulsifies the product, but it doesn't bring a lot else to the formulation, so you can adjust those, those knobs yourself. So it's a really, really versatile emulsifier that's very, very fun to play with. This nakedness does mean that formulating with glycerol stearate and PEG 100 stearate is different from formulating with Poloax or Olivan 1000. I thought I'd create this video and its partner blog post to show you how you can take a formulation designed to work with something like Poloax or Redomols SCG and adapt it to work with glycerol stearate and PEG 100 stearate. The general gist of it is that you need to use less emulsifying wax and you need to add some sort of a fatty thickener to make up for the loss in viscosity. Please make sure you are reading the partner blog post, it's linked in the description box below. I've provided clear and fairly extensive instructions on how to modify formulations to use glycerol stearate and PEG 100 stearate instead of more common emulsifying waxes. This video is more about showing you what happens, so of course we're going to make the modified version and I walk you through how I came to those modifications in the blog post, so please make sure you're reading it. And then I show you side by side the version from June and the version that we're making today so you can see how close they are. I also show you what happens if you use glycerol stearate and PEG 100 stearate, just one for one, swapping it out for something like Poloax or Vredomols SCG, so you can get a feel for why you don't really want to do that. As the entire point of this formulation is making an emulsion with this particular emulsifying wax, you do need this exact emulsifying wax. If you don't have it, I would recommend you check out the post from June, which uses more typical emulsifying waxes. You could use Poloax, Redomols, SCG, Emulsifying Wax NF, or all of them 1000 or BTMS 50 very, very easily. But the point of this formulation is that we are using this emulsifying wax. All right, I think that's enough preamble. Please, please, please read the blog post and make sure you are checking out the Humble Bee and Me encyclopedia entry on this emulsifier, as both are very illuminating. But yeah. Let's get started. We'll begin by combining the ingredients for our two heated phases in two separate beakers. So in this beaker, I already have 76.5 grams of distilled water, and to that I'm going to add 10 grams vegetable glycerin. For our heated oil phase, we'll need three ingredients. You'll need 1.3 grams glycerol stearate and PEG 100 stearate, and this is absolutely integral to this formulation. Please make sure you're reading the blog post and watching this entire video to learn more. 1.7 grams cetyryl alcohol, and 10 grams fractionated coconut oil or other liquid carrier oil of your choice. Before we heat our phases, we're going to weigh the water phase and note that weight so we can replace any water that is lost to evaporation during heating. To heat everything through, we're going to use a water bath. So this is a wide flat bottom saute pan with about an inch or three centimeters of water in the bottom of it. I'm going to put both of our phases in there and then we're going to go put this on the stovetop over medium heat for about half an hour to melt everything through and bring both phases to the same temperature. Once everything has heated through and melted, you can remove your water bath from the heat and then remove your measuring cups or beakers from your water bath. So our first step is topping up the water phase again. So we'll pop that on our scale, refer to that note we wrote down earlier and top it off with a bit of preheated distilled water. So now we need to blend this with our immersion blender. As you can see, it's really liquid. It's super, super, super thin. Um, so we're going to need to tread quite carefully with the, uh, the immersion blender. I'm gonna go in and start with a few short pulses before working up to a full blend and that will uh, avoid lotion spraying everywhere. It's also part of the reason I chose a beaker for this formulation rather than a measuring cup. It's got a bit higher sides and I find that it is a lot less prone to making a great big mess. All right, so that was about two minutes of blending and you can see that this still has the consistency of water. It's just, you know, just running off 
the immersion blender here. There's really no need to like scrape it off. There's, it's just a little bit wet. We are going to leave this to cool for about five minutes and then come back and blend it some more. All right, so this has had a chance to cool a bit, but you can see it's still really, really, really thin. A very like watery-like consistency. So we're going to keep blending this up. So that was about another two minutes of blending and this is definitely starting to gain some viscosity. It's never gonna be really, really crazy thick because we you know, did design this to be a pump top friendly, but this is definitely uh, gaining some, some viscosity. I'm going to, yeah, leave this to cool for a bit longer and then we can come back and check in on it. All right, looking good. Got some body coming together here. And yeah, get that, I think another bit of a blending, but it's, if this was a thicker lotion, I probably wouldn't just cause we wouldn't be able to, but it's on the thinner side, so we can. And then we can incorporate our cool down phase. So when we pull the head of the immersion blender out, you can really see that it has gained some viscosity. Uh, if this was you know, a custard, it would have reached that point where you could draw a line through it on the back of a spoon. So it definitely has gained some nice uh, viscosity, but yeah, it is still fairly thin, really lightweight. So we want this to work really nicely in a pump top bottle. And also that thinner consistency is a benefit of the, or a feature of the, um, the emulsifier that we are using here. But yeah, we can add our cool down phase now. Our cool down phase is so simple. I'm going to just add it straight to the beaker, nice and careful like. So you need 0.5 grams liquid germol plus. And if you want to learn about possibly using different preservatives, I have an FAQ on that. So I highly recommend checking that out at humblebeeandme.com slash FAQ. Okay, so that's it for the making, but before we package this up, I want to do a bit of a show and tell and show you a couple different versions of this formulation so you can learn a bit more about this emulsifier. Make sure you're reading the partner blog post. There's a lot more information there and they really are designed to go together. All right, so here are kind of four different versions of this super simple moisturizing lotion. So this is the one I did a few months ago using Polo Wax or Emulsifying Wax NF as the Emulsifying Wax. And you could use Polo Wax, Emulsifying Wax NF, all of M1000, Read Emuls SCG, BTMS 50 would also work really well. So I put a little bit in the dish here so you can kind of get a feel for these two compared to one another. But this one, it pumps out really, really easily. It's quite liquidy. You can kind of see as I shimmy my hand, it does spread around. It's really lightweight, massages into the skin very, very easily. That's that. Um, for more information on this, I've linked to it in the description box below. Um, it's really worthwhile comparing these two formulations to sort of see how they differ. And again, make sure you're reading the blog post that goes with this video because it's really quite uh, educational. So here's the one that we just made. And I would say that this one is thinner than its sort of, um, its Polo Wax companion, but not by a whole heck of a lot. When you are swapping the emulsifiers around as we have done today, you know, it does take a bit of iterating, but it's also worth, you know, acknowledging that they are different emulsifiers and they really do create different types of products. So you will get, you know, some differences for sure. So here's this one. It's also, They're pretty close. I know, and I look at sort of how quickly, you know, one's running versus the other. They're pretty darn close. So I'm gonna set these aside. These are our two sort of successful ones. And then we have kind of two flops and also a successful one. This is a one-to-one -one swap. So I just, I took exactly the same formulation as for the super simple moisturizing lotion with Polo Wax or Emulsifying Wax NF and I used um, glycerol stearate and PEG 100 stearate instead. And this is, this, this did not work very well. 
you can see it is crazy, crazy, crazy liquid and it's split. It was absolutely not stable enough without, um, without some added thickeners. So I don't know if that's super, super clear on camera or not, but it absolutely split. We kind of have like a, a foamy top, like a latte up here. And then everything else is just like sad skim milk. So this is what happens if you use glycerol stearate and PEG 100 stearate instead of an emulsifying wax like Polo Wax. You get a dramatically thinner product. And in a formulation like this one where there really weren't any fatty thickeners or gums or anything, stability does start to be an issue. So they're really not uh, swappable, just kind of one-to-one. So this is the formulation that we made today, but made a different method without as much mixing as we did today. So I used a little mini hand mixer and I didn't mix it nearly as thoroughly as I did today. And this one has also split. And I, down at the bottom, you can see that it is watery and it's, yeah, not stable. So we've got kind of a thicker top on this, uh, but that's because there's water on the bottom. So yeah, not, not a stable emulsion because it just wasn't blended thoroughly enough. And then this is a formulation that we just made with the same method where it was mixed nice and thoroughly with an immersion blender. And you can see that it is, you know, it's still pretty liquidy. So it'll uh, be very nice and pump top friendly, but it is, you know, still stable. Those are the different, different versions. So we've got one to one, way too thin and not stable this this emulsion eventually splits and we've got a modified version without thorough enough high shear mixing and this version also eventually splits and then we have our successful variation where we traded some of the emulsifier for a fatty thickener and then thoroughly blended it and this is stable and pretty darn comparable to the super simple moisturizing lotion that i shared back in june and with this all made and the uh, show and tell done, all that's left is packaging. So this emulsion is very pump top bottle friendly. So I've got a four ounce or 120 mil pump top bottle here and we'll just pour this straight in. Popping these can be a little bit tricky. I find that it usually helps if you pull up as you twist. There we go prime the pump and there is our lovely super simple moisturizing lotion made with glycerol stearate and peg 100 stearate it feels absolutely gorgeous on the skin really moisturizing lightweight fast absorbing no soaping effect just lovely so thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and please make sure you are reading the full partner blog post for this formulation. There's really a lot more information there and they are designed to be a pair. The blog post talks more about sort of the process and the logic and how to convert a formulation that originally used something like Polo Wax to use this emulsifying wax instead. And then the video is more about like process and show and tell. So yeah, thank you so much and I'll see you next time.